What does it take to see a city touched and a world changed? A people first changed by encountering a loving God. We celebrate because we wholeheartedly believe God deserves to be praised. We connect because we see that true life change happens in the context of meaningful relationships. We care because we believe God loves humanity. Therefore, we exist to reach people that are near to us, but far from Him. We are Christian Faith Fellowship Church. Good morning and welcome to Christian Faith on Demand. We are super excited that you guys are here with us today, whether you're watching from your laptop, your car, your house, wherever you are. We are honored and thankful that you decided to take this moment and to spend it with us. But before we get started, before we get into it, we want to make sure that you have all of the essentials. So, do you have your phone or your, or your Bible? Check. Do you have your something to write with? And if you're driving, we ask you not to write while you drive, but just make sure you have your listening ears on. Check. Do you have your, your tea, your coffee, your drink, whatever suits your fancy? Check. Now you guys ready for me to get out of the way and you're ready to hear an amazing word? Check. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Well, I have a message that I want to share with you that is, that is, that is exciting to my soul and I pray that it is a tremendous blessing with you. But I kind of want to pick up where we left off last week. And, and then I'm going to take us in a different direction. So stay with me. But what we started speaking on last week, we got through the first couple of pieces. But then there's this last piece that we just couldn't get to because we ran out of time. And I want us to pick up right there. Are y'all ready? Yes. Come on, holler at me. Are y'all ready? Yes. So go with me in your Bible to 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter the 16th through the 18th verse. And the scripture is on the screen. It says, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning who? Come on, concerning who? You. So this scripture is speaking directly to you. So there's something in this scripture that God wants to see you do because when you do it, there is something that he can accomplish in your life. Are y'all still with me? So we saw last week that our life is to be one that is always without ceasing and in everything. There's this constant relationship. There's this constant uh, 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 knowledge of his presence. There's this constant acknowledgement of him in our space, and because of this, we are constantly praying. Again, we taught it on last week. If you are not here, go catch it on demand because I don't have time to reteach it again. But you're praying always, and because of praying always, we showed you how to do that. Then you're all then you're able to rejoice always, and then you're able to in everything give thanks. Y'all remember that? So now that we've got this accomplished, why is this important? Because the scripture says that this is the will of God. This is the will of God. What is God's will? That are we are rejoicing always, that we are praying without ceasing, that we are in everything giving thanks. This is the will of God. So what is his will? If I could put it in very simple terms, God's will for us is that we are always in a place of prayer and thanks. Are you still with me? Because remember last week, we told you prayer was in the middle and everything, the rejoicing always and in everything give thanks is leaning on the tent pole, which is prayer. No prayer, no thanks. No prayer, no rejoicing always. If you have a life of prayer, then you're able to give him thanks because the result of Prayer is a thankful life, and the result of being thankful is a praise. Are y'all still with me? So 
This is God's will for our life, that we are constantly moving in, inhabiting this space and this place, that we are always in prayer and we are always giving him thanks. And remember we said last week, we're not giving him thanks for everything, but we're giving him thanks in everything. Because the prayer that we have with God says, no matter what happens, I can still give God thanks because I know from his word that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So this allows me to stay in a place of giving thanks because I'm constantly in a place of prayer. If it's hard for you to give God thanks, don't be mad with God. Check your prayer life. Because I've never seen somebody who has a prayer life who can't give God thanks. Because the overflow from a prayer life is that you're thankful. Because if you're constantly praying, you're constantly acknowledging God, you're constantly seeking his face, you're constantly asking him for direction, then it helps you to see things in a way that is different from other people that are not constantly seeking his face. You don't see the glass half empty. You see the glass on the way to being filled. Are y'all here today? You see things differently. A person who prays has hope. Even when you get negative news, your hope ain't over. So there's a thanksgiving that's still in you because you can say, God, I know this is dark, but I know you can turn it around. God, I know this may be difficult right now, but it's just one word from you speaking that'll flip this situation, that'll open this door, that'll make a way out of no way, that will do the impossible. Come on, are y'all in here today? Thanks or praise is the result of somebody that has a prayerful life. So then why is prayer and praise his will? Are you still with me? Because the scripture says, For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Why is it his will that you stay in prayer and in praise? It's his will that you stay in prayer and in praise because there are things that he's able to do for you, things that he's able to move to you that is the result of your prayer and praise. Your prayer and praise will open some doors. Your prayer and praise will turn some things around. Your prayer and praise will cause heaven to move on earth in your regard. Because I've never seen somebody dissing God and complaining get God to move forward. I've never seen somebody always complaining and God says, hey, that's the one I want to show up for. I want to show for the one that's always complaining. I want to show for the one who thinks I can't do it. I want to show for the one who don't give me any thanks at all. I want to show for the one that ignores me every moment of the day. That's not how God responds. God says, I'm looking for the one that trusts me. I'm looking for the one that believes that I can do it. I'm looking for the one that is expecting a miracle. I'm looking for the one that is still in communion and relationship with me, that's still talking to me. Whether it's good or bad, he's still praying. Whether it's happy or sad, she's still praying. Whether they are up or down, they still praying. Are y'all here? That's who I'm looking for, that I'm going to do something great in their life. Are y'all still with me? So if this is the case, then let's look to Jesus. Because in looking to Jesus, we'll see an example of this happening. Because everything that God requires of us to do that we see in his word, Jesus at some place did it in his life. Because God wouldn't require of you something that Jesus couldn't do first. This is part of the reason why Jesus came, to exemplify to you the possibility of living in the kingdom, to exemplify to you the possibility of living righteous, to exemplify to us the possibility of living in a way that pleases God every day of our life. Are you still with me? And if that is the case, then I want to bring your attention to this scripture 
as we jump into what our thought is for today. Go with me to John, the 6th chapter, the 11th through the 13th verse. John, the 6th chapter, the 11th through the 13th verse. It says, And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those that were sitting down. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. From this scripture, I'm going to take the next 15 minutes and talk to you about a subject that's entitled leftovers. Somebody say leftovers. Leftovers. Come on, somebody shout leftovers. Now, I I just had Thanksgiving dinner at my house. I had some people there. We had a great time. I threw down, if I do say so myself. If nobody else say it, I'll say it. I smoked two turkeys. Smoked them. I didn't barbecue them. I didn't grill them. I didn't bake them in the oven. I smoked them with wood and smoke and heat. And it gave it this crispy outer appearance with a buttery texture of the turkey meat. Oh, I smoked that thing. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Then I went to my famous uh, 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 dressing recipe because black people don't do stuffing. We dress stuff. Well, maybe y'all do. We we (laughs) dressing is made with some cornbread and some uh, come on, can I got some 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 Negroes in the house. Okay, all right. I don't mean to disenfranchise anybody else, but, you know, stuffing is with bread, and you stuffing in the turkey. The African-American experience is cornbread, and we don't stuff it inside nothing. It's on the outside because that's, okay. So I had dressing. I made some dressing, I, and I worked that dressing. I massaged that dressing. That dressing is on point. And then I got, I got the cranberry sauce, not normal cranberry sauce. I got cranberry sauce with the cranberries in it. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And I made sure that that was put all together, sprinkled a little lemon, lemon on it to make sure it brightened up the flavors of the cranberry. Then my wife made some sweet potatoes. Y'all, uh, we, we had Thanksgiving. We, we, we had Thanksgiving. And, and it was good. It was very, 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 very good. Everybody ate. Everybody took stuff home. What I found out later on that night and the next day is that we had a whole bunch of leftovers. What is leftovers? Is Leftovers is what is left over. <laughs> there's, no, there's no Greek or Hebrew meaning to that one. It's just what's left over. And, and so there were a lot of leftovers. And it amazes me how you can start with a few items that seem really small. But when you cook them, somehow they seem to expand. Somehow they seem to make more than what it was when you first started. You know, dressing, you can end up with a pan. But dressing started off with a box of cornbread. Come on in here, y'all. Are y'all still with me? A box of Jiffy. Who used Jiffy in their dressing? Uh huh. A box of Jiffy, one onion, maybe two. A green pepper, if you're feeling fancy. A little bit of chicken stock. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Some some breadcrumbs and some seasoning bottles. These few things equal a pan. It's like somehow these few things, when you put it in the hand of the chef, these few things expand. And they not only take care of those that are at the table, but the expansion is so great that there's stuff that's left over because it got to the hands of the chef who knew what to do with the ingredients. Uh, I'm almost finished. Y'all don't even see it yet. Jesus was in a similar circumstance. He was preaching the gospel. We find it here in John. This is one of the, one of the miracles of Jesus that you'll find in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We find it here in John that there are 5,000 hungry men, not counting women and children, 
So at very conservative estimates, there were at least 20,000 people that were following Jesus to hear this message of the kingdom. They come to Jesus, and it's been a long day, and the people are hungry, not just spiritually, but naturally. They come to Jesus, his disciples, and says, the people are hungry. What are we supposed to do? Jesus says, what's available? They come back to Jesus and say, Jesus, there was this kid out there, and he was, uh, he was selling, uh, 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 he didn't say selling, but history tells you that he was part of a caravan of gypsies that were following large crowds, and so his basket is what he had available to sell. It wasn't a lunch because it was five loaves of bread and two fish. Who eats? What boy eats five loaves of bread and two fish? He had five loaves of bread and two fish because he was trying to sell it to make profit for his family so that their needs could be met. Are y'all still with me? He has five loaves of bread and two fish. They come to Jesus and say, Jesus, all that's left, all that we can find are these five loaves of bread and two fish. Astonishingly enough, Jesus didn't say, that ain't enough. Jesus didn't say, go get some more. Jesus didn't say any of that. Jesus said, bring me what you have. And the disciples brought to him five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus has to feed, watch this, 20,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus, when he gets the five loaves of bread and two fish, He does something extraordinary because what Jesus has in his hand is simply this. What he has in his hand is not enough to meet the need. Are you still with me? Have you ever got a bill and you looked at your account and your account that was in your hand showed you that what you got ain't enough to meet the need? Come on, somebody. Have they ever knocked on your door and said, you got two weeks or we're going to put you out of this place and you're getting ready to get evicted? And you look and you scrounge up what you can get. You call family members. You're trying to borrow stuff. And when you put it all together, what's in your hand is not enough to satisfy the bill. Have you ever gone to your refrigerator and you have to feed your kids, but what's in your refrigerator is nowhere near enough to take care of the need of feeling, feeding you and your children for that night. Has anybody in here ever felt or had the experience that what you've had in your hand was not enough to meet the need? Come on, let me see. Let me see if I'm talking to the right people. That what you have is not enough to meet the need. Jesus feels you. Jesus knows exactly where you are because he was in the exact predicament. If I, may, if I may say his predicament was magnified many times over because now Jesus is not just responsible for him, not just responsible for the disciples, but was responsible for over 5,000 families that were present on that day. Jesus with five loaves of bread and two fish. Somebody say five loaves and two fish. Jesus with five loaves and two fish with it in his hand. He doesn't freak out. He doesn't panic. He doesn't throw in the towel. He doesn't take what he has and throw it on the ground in a hissy fit and say, this ain't enough, God. God, you got me out here in this wilderness. You had me come down through 42 generations. You bring me to this point to be able to help these people. I'm preaching your word, and now these people is hungry, and you give me five loaves of bread and two fish to take care of them? God, how you do me like this? He didn't do none of that. None of that. None of that. What did he do? Let's look at the scripture. Go back to the scripture. It says, he took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, stop. There's another uh, sighting of this story 
that's in Matthew 14 and 19, and it says that he blessed it and broke it. This is the same thing he did at the communion table. He blessed it and broke it. So to bless it means to pray. So Jesus, looking at what wasn't enough, his response was to pray and give God thanks. His response is the very thing that's being told of us to do in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. and everything, give thanks. Prayer and thanks. We see Jesus doing the exact same thing with a situation that seems unfixable. He takes what he has, which isn't enough, and he does the thing that God tells us is his will for us, which is to pray and give thanks. Are y'all here? Not to pray and complain. Now listen, I don't want you to raise your hands on this, but, but come on, let's be honest. The last time or the few last times you may have been short, did, did you cry? Did you like, God, how you going to get me out this one? God, how you going to fix this? God, how you going to, God, how do we get back here? What, was your prayer filled with complaining? And as a result, it couldn't end with thanksgiving? But was your prayer of one of saying, God, you got mail. <laughs> God, this came through. I don't know how to respond to this, but I trust that you're going to make a way out of no way, and I trust you're going to do what is the right thing to do. So I'm going to give you thanks because I know you got this handle. I'm not even finna worry. I'm finna go to bed and sleep at night because I'm giving you thanks and I'm praying to you. This is what our response is supposed to be. Are you still with me? Because watch this. I want you to see this pattern of what Jesus did. Are you still with me? Watch this. Because there's a pattern. If you can get the pattern, then you can get the miracle. If you can get the pattern, then you can get the miracle. If you do the pattern, then you will do the miracle. Then you will get the miracle. Are y'all still with me? So here's the pattern. His attitude directed his actions. And his actions produced leftovers. I'm going to say it again. His attitude directed his actions. And his actions produced leftovers. What was his attitude? His attitude was one of prayer and praise. Because this was his attitude, this attitude then directed him what to do. And what he did then caused a miracle. Are you still with me? So let's look at what happened. Okay? Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, that was his attitude, prayer and thanks, this attitude directed, this attitude gave him directions. He then distributed them to the disciples. I don't know, that was perfect. What was that for? That was, that was great. That was, phew, good point. Thank you. Watch this. He had given thanks. So his attitude is developing his actions. His actions then was to distribute them to the disciples and the disciples to those that were sitting down. That don't make no sense. That his accent would be, take these five loaves of bread and two fish. I'm going to give these to the disciples. And then you tell the disciples, I want you to give these to the people. Are you still with me? That, that, that accent doesn't make any sense. But when you are led by prayer and praise... You'll, you'll have actions that you do that won't make sense to other people that are not praying and giving God praise. So don't allow people who are not praying and giving God praise to tell you that what you've been directed to do doesn't make any sense. 
and that you shouldn't do it, and that you should, and that you should stop, because that's crazy talk. Why would you do something like that? Listen, you're not where I am. Because what's directing me on what to do, what's causing my actions is not desperation, it's not frustration, but it is my prayer and my thanks. My prayer and my thanks is directing me what to do. And in this place, it directed Jesus, give it to the disciples. Disciples, give it to the people. And as the disciples... As he gave it to the disciples and the disciples gave it to the people, that's where the miracle happened. You want to see where the miracle happened? I'm going to show you where the miracle happened. Isaac, come here. You're going to be my disciple. I'm going to show you where the miracle happens. So you stand right here. That's good. I'm Jesus. I just got through taking what I had, which isn't enough. I'm giving God thanks because of my prayer. And I'm knowing God's going to work it out. I turn around with five loaves of bread and two fish. I then tell my disciple, hey, disciple, you can turn around now. I want you to take this and give it to the people. So he takes pieces of it, gives it to the disciple. The disciple then turns to get it to the people. I'm sure the disciple is thinking that, that Jesus is crazy. Come on, y'all. I just saw what he had in his hand. He broke off a piece of that bread and broke off a piece of that fish, giving it to me, and he want me to face 20,000 people? He want me to do it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm yours, Jesus. I'll do what you say, but this don't make any sense. Are you here? But it's in that space that the miracle happened. It's in that space of not understanding how this works that the miracle happens. It's in the space of trusting him when it doesn't make any sense is where the miracle happens. Because when you as the disciple turn back to Jesus, what's in his hand has grown. You don't know how he did it. You don't know how he multiplied All you know is that every time you come back to him to get more, there's more from where there wasn't enough. And he says, here, take this and go pay that bill. Turn around. And I don't know. Just go and pay that bill. Call them up. I'll tell you what to say. I'll tell you what to do. Because it's in the obedience. It's in this space. It's in you going to do what he said. It's in your prayer and thanks that the miracle happens. Stop trying to be this job. Just do your job. Be the one that he can give it to, that he knows he, you will do what he says, and that when you come back for more, that there'll be more available. Are you here? My God, Jesus, I just paid bill number two. Turn back around. What you got? Oh, I got more. Because you did that? This ain't stopping. If you keep doing that, this will be more than enough. I don't care what you have to answer to. I don't care what bills you have to pay. I don't care what mouths you have to feed. I don't care what the unsurmountable odds are. If you just do what I said and give me thanks and prayer, every time you turn back, I'll hit you with more so you can take care of more. When you get that done, turn back to me. I'll hit you with more so you can get that done. Just take care of your part. Stop trying to do his part. Are y'all here? Do y'all see that? Because thank you. That's where the miracle takes place. It takes place when you are obedient and you are doing what he tells you to do. Stop trying to figure it out before you do what he said. Just do what he said. Because the miracle for you is not in your complaining. It's not in your trying to figure it out. It's not in you airing your grievance. The miracle for you is in you saying, God, I trust you. I'm praying. The, the tent pole in my life is prayer. So it allows me to rejoice always and to give you thanks. 
because this is your will. Why? Because this is how you have designed for me to get out of trouble. Ah, this is how you have designed for miracles to happen in my life. This is how you have designed for, for, for me, for you to get access to me. This is how you have designed it. You can't change the design. You can't change the pattern. Just copy it and repeat it. And get the same results. Are y'all still here? Here's the thing that messed me up, and I'm finished. Watch this. Jesus said, gather up the fragments that remain. Okay. So that nothing is lost. Okay. Gather it up so nothing is lost. Okay. He then says, that it says there, therefore they gathered up the fragments. And I'm paraphrasing. And they filled 12 baskets full of loaves of bread and fish. 12 baskets. When they started with less than a basket, they ended up with 12 baskets. Why is this important for us to know? Because I wish I could hope this like I feel it, but I'm not going to today. I'm just going to teach it. Why is this important for us to know? Because look at what Jesus said. Again, the result of 12 baskets is the result of what he said. If he never said the previous sentence, then there would have been nothing for them to pick up. Because he said the previous sentence and they went to go do it, there was something to pick up. Because it would seem as though we started out with five loaves of bread and two fish. We, we somehow miraculously, we got through feeding up to 20,000 people. Jesus, now you have the audacity to say there's leftovers? How is that possible? Again, stop worrying about how he does it. But just know that he does. Because the same way I took a box of Jiffy and one onion and one green pepper if you're feeling fancy and one container of chicken stock and a container of breadcrumbs and I mixed them all together as the chef. Individual ingredients that were brought to me that I didn't go get. that was mixed together as the chef and I put it in the fire of the oven, what it produced from it was greater in consistency than what went into the oven. The end result was greater than what came back from the store. How is that possible? Jesus can show you just even within cooking that if the chef, if it's a good chef, they have the ability to take these minor ingredients and to make them expand, make them to be more than enough. Are y'all here with me? So why is this so important? Because look at what Jesus said, and I'm finished. Jesus said, gather up the fragments so that nothing is lost. In other words, pick it up so nothing is lost. Pick it up so nothing is lost. Pick it up so nothing is lost. The last thing that this word is telling you today is pick up this principle so that nothing is lost concerning you. There's something great he wants to do in your life, but you got to pick up this principle. Pick up this principle. If you pick up this principle, then there will be 
nothing, nothing lost concerning you. What you will always have is leftovers. More than enough. Not just enough. Not just enough for you and your family. Not just enough for you and your family and the community. But enough that is for you and your family and the community and there's stuff left over to give to somebody else. If you pick up the principle. What's the principle? The principle is your attitude will direct your actions and your actions will produce a miracle or produce leftovers. So it is important for us to stay in the place of prayer and thanks. No matter what you're going through, God, I'm going to get this to you in prayer, then I'm going to give you thanks. Because I know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to your purpose. Pray and give thanks. God, you're going to make a way out of no way. I haven't seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. Are you here? Whatever I'm going through, it's nothing that's too great that my God in me cannot handle. It is this type of prayer that will give you thanks. When people see you and say, how are you getting through this? Well, I had a little talk with Jesus. I told him all about my problems. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. How is it that you can have a smile on your face when they give you a pink slip? Because I serve a God that said if he can feed the birds of the air and clothe the lilies of the field, then how much more will he do for his children? I ain't concerned about this job. God's got me because I already gave this to him in prayer. Now, the only thing that's left for me to do is just to do what he said. Turn around and see a miracle. Do what he said. Turn around and see another miracle. Because there's leftovers that's available in my life. I ain't worried about the diagnosis. Are you here? I'm not worried about what they said. I'm not worried about what's happening in the economy. I'm not worried about the new variant. I'm not worried about the stuff that's going on. Because my God is faithful. He's got me covered. And I'm staying in a place of prayer. Don't, and I got to stop. Don't you let nothing knock you out of your place of prayer. Because your prayer, your ability to pray, your ability to pray without ceasing is the key to everything. You stay in a place of prayer. You stay in a place of being aware that God is all around me. And I've got to bow to him to seek him to know what to do next. What move to make. What job to take. What phone call to pick up. What to leave alone. What to watch. Where to take my children. Where to sit. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God, what do you want me to do next? Because the safest place in the whole wide world is in the center, in the middle of the will of the living God. God, you got me if I stay in place. God, help me stay in place. 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 Help my prayer discipline my flesh. Help my prayer keep me in the place of seeking you and going after you and staying with you and saying, I want you more than anything else. As the deer patches for the water, so does my soul patches after you. God, it's you in the morning. It's you in the afternoon. It's you in the evening. God, you are the key to my success. God, you are the reason why I'm still living. Woo! A thousand may fall to my right. Ten thousand may fall to my left. But now will nothing come to me because I am the blessed of the Lord. Are y'all here? You can have that kind of thanks because it comes from prayer that is rooted in his word. I have a hope that the world does not have. I got a joy that the world does not have. I got peace that the world does not have. Stay with God. Because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, before it's all said and done, and I got to stop, 
This is not the only place in the world where we see, say their will, it's not the only place in the world where we see, in the word, where we see prayer and praise producing something. Can I tell you one more thing? Come on. Can I tell you one more thing? Come on. At home, social media. Can I tell y'all one more thing? Okay, I see the nine their heads. Tell you one more thing. Because ideally I would make this into a message next week, but, but, but it's Christmas time and there's some other things that I got to get to. But this is not the only place in the scripture where a prayer and praise did something ridiculous. If you are not familiar with the scripture, but there's a scripture <coughs> with this guy called Paul and Silas that had been beat and whipped to within an inch of their life. And they were thrown inside of the inner jail. But the Bible says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas, read the scripture, they were praying and singing. That's what the Bible says. They were praying and singing. After the prayer and the singing was heard by heaven, the Bible says, suddenly, there was a great earthquake. And all the doors of the prison were open and the shackles fell off. What was binding them, what had imprisoned them, just fell off. Why? Not because Paul was complaining. God, I'm your servant. I preached all my life. I did what you told me to do. God, how could you let this happen? That's not what he did. At the moment of some of the most difficult times in his life, he was found with the discipline of a believer, and he was praying. And his prayer, when he got done, made him sing songs to God. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, good, good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endure for all generations. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. What can provoke a song in a prison? Prayer. Prayer. Because when you get to the place of singing, then God knows the prayer has taken root. So now let me produce a miracle. Are y'all here today? Prayer and praise is throughout the Bible. I hear you, Father. Whenever his people went into battle, there was prayer the night before. There was fasting. They went down in sackcloth and ashes, fasting and praying to God. God, thank you for the victory tomorrow. Thank you for giving us the victory tomorrow. Thank you for giving this in our favor. And then the next day, they would tell the tribe of Judah to lead us out in praise. Lead us out in a song. And they would head to battle singing. How could you head to war singing? Well, know how they could do it? Because they prayed the whole night before. And they knew that if they worked the principle, that God would show up for them. And every time they did it in the scripture, you would see that God would show up. Sometimes he said, uh-uh, you ain't got to do nothing. I'm going to fight this battle for you. You just stay right here. You did what I told you to do to get to this point. Thank you. Now, psst, I got it from here. And then he turns to take care of what's ailing you and what's dealing with you. Why? Because your prayer and your praise preceded it. Because your prayer and praise is his will. Are y'all here? It's his will. I got to stop. Stand to your feet. I got to stop. <clears throat> this is the leftovers. This is the leftovers. There's nothing that God can't do. There's nothing that he can't or will not do. The question and the issue for you is this. Will you do your part? God's got his part. But the question is, will you do your part? Your part is to do what? What's the first thing? Come on, I can't hear you. What's the second thing? Can't hear you. Give thanks or praise. That's the second thing. Two Ps, prayer and praise. 
If you do those two things, you'll come to me and say, Pastor, you won't believe what happened. And I'm going to say, did you do the PNP? And you're going to say, yep, I sure did. Then I'm going to say to you, well then, no, I ain't surprised with what happened. Some of the stuff that you're in, some of the things that you have right now, is because your prayer and praise opened a miracle for you. Are y'all here? Your prayer and praise. So stop complaining. Because complaining, I want you to write this down at some time. Complaining helps you to remain. If you complain, you remain. But prayer and praise will give you a miracle. Prayer and praise will kick doors down. Prayer and praise will make people who had said no yesterday have to say yes tomorrow. Because now you've approached it not with just you, with some prayer and praise. Listen, if somebody do me wrong or say something wrong or don't give me what's owed to me, all I'm going to say to them is, okay, I got something for you. It's all right. I'll be back in a few days. Or you're going to call me in a few days. Why? Because I'm finna go do, you do what you do, I'm finna go do what I do. And what I do is prayer, what I do is pray, and what I do is give God praise. And I sit back and watch the miracle. I sit back and watch leftovers happen. Amen? Let me pray. I can stay here all day. Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for this powerful word to let us know that you have left us with kingdom tools to produce kingdom results in the midst of this earth. We are not bound or reduced to or inhibited by what the world says because we are ambassadors from a different kingdom. And so God, we will begin to use the tools that you gave us. We will begin to assert our power and privilege because of our status of being a child of the living God. We will no longer sit back and just accept what the world says we have to take when the kingdom says you're not of this world, you're from a different place. You're just living here right now, but you're living here to be an example of a place that is to come. So God, help us to shine with the glory of that place. Help us to shine with the favor of that place. Help us to shine with the will of your kingdom. Because this is your will. This is your will. This is your will. This is your will concerning us. So help us to remember when our backs are against the wall, when we get pushed into a corner, when we don't know what else to do, help us to remember that our resolve and our resolution is found in your word. It's found in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. It's found in John 6, 11 through 13. We will pray and we will give you praise and we will see a miracle. And God, I thank you for it. Now, Father, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice, whether they are here on this campus or whether they are watching us around the globe via social media. God, I pray that if they don't know you, that right now that they are reaching out their heart and their hands to you and that you don't make receiving you difficult. I thank you because of that outstretched hand and heart that you see them and you are coming into their life right now and you are letting them know that you love them more than anything else. <clears throat> God, thank you for salvation today. Thank you for restoring those that were discouraged. Thank you for encouraging those that didn't know what to do next. Just thank you for the power of your word, God, that in it, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. That in it, it can deal with everything that's dealing with us. We give you praise for it now. In the master's name of Jesus, let all God's people shout hallelujah. Come on, that word was a blessing to you. Put your hands together and give God some praise. <clears throat> Come on, praise, 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 praise. Give us some praise. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. Offering. As you all know, we are in the season of Deuteronomy 111. We are in the season of receiving this special offering that the Lord told us to do. And this is the last week of this season. As I told you all, this season wouldn't last forever and that you needed to get in and respond as much as you could, as often as you could, because the season would come to an end. And the one good thing about the end of planting season is that the next season is harvest. So if you planted the seeds, you may have even seen something up to this point. But I'm telling you, you ain't seen nothing yet of the type of harvest that's coming to your life because of your faithfulness and obedience to sow this 111 offering on top of your time. So for the last time, what is the Deuteronomy 111 offering? It says this, May the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times more numerous than you are and bless you as he has promised you. This has been our prayer that as we are releasing 111, that God would do that in our life that will be a thousand times more numerous and that God will bless us just as he's promised us. I don't know about you, but God has promised me some things and I'm looking forward to seeing those things come to pass. Amen? And so we jumpstart that. This was the instruction that God gave us with the 111 offering. So I want you to, again, get that 111 offering. It's $111. If you can't do $111, do something that reflects the 111. So maybe it's $71.11 or $51.11 <clears throat> or $21.11. Whatever it is, get it to reflect that 111 so that you know that you're saying before God, God, I got seed in the ground and I believe in for a harvest. Amen? This does not replace your time. This is on top of your time. Amen. On the screen behind me are our giving platforms. We provide digital platforms to make giving for you easy so that as you become disciplined in your giving, you don't have to wait till Sunday. When God blesses you with something, when God does something for you, you can respond right away with your tithe and offering. You don't have to wait till Sunday. But if you would like to give by way of an envelope, at your chair, there are envelopes available to you. And if you're watching us by way of social media and you don't like digital platforms, I hear you. And you want us to be able to send you some envelopes so that you can send your offering in, we'll send them to you. We just need you to email us at hello at cffcaz.org. Give us your name and your address and we will make sure that we mail some envelopes to you so that you can participate with us during this time of giving. Amen? Is everybody ready to give their tithe and their Deuteronomy 111 offering? Stand to your feet. You can either hold your device in the air or hold your envelope in the air. Father, we thank you for every person that is releasing their tithe and offering according to your word. God, we pray that there is favor and that there is harvest on this seed according to what you have promised. God, I thank you for making ways out of no way financially. I thank you for removing financial burdens. I thank you for increasing financial opportunities. God, I thank you for doing that which only you can do. Thank you that we won't miss a meal, a bill, or a deal because of this moment. Now, Father, thank you. Take everything that's received. Let it be used for the work of the kingdom that we will always be able to tell a dying world about a living Christ. And we give you praise for this now. In Jesus' name, let every glad heart say amen. Precious hearts, you may have your seat. <laughs> Life has a way of throwing us off course, causing us to lose that glimmer of hope that once upon a time twinkled in our eye. 
We can all remember the days when we were filled with enormous ideas, convinced we were going to take the world by storm. But as life goes on, that storm crushes us and it leaves us with the remnants of a shattered dream. At this very moment, we are all in need of a voice of encouragement that will help us to rise from the depths of despair and be filled with hope as we once again pursue our dreams. We need to be reminded that we have purpose. Our dreams still matter and that the world is waiting on us. This is why I wrote this book because I know what it is to be crushed with disappointment. I know what it is to wrestle with hopelessness. I know what it is to be down and counted out. But I also know what it is to rise and stand on top of the mountain and lift my hands in triumph because I had the boldness to dream again.